So let's talk about vaginal bleeding. We're going to start by talking about non-pregnant vaginal bleeding, and then we'll move on to pregnant. So Aaron, you want to start us off? Sure. Thanks, Jess. So ovarian cancer, right? Peak incidence is in older women, age 55 to 65. There's some risk factors, infertility, low parity, high fat diet, a history of breast or colon cancer, or a family history. Um, it's common to be diagnosed at a fairly advanced stage. Symptoms might include pelvic pain, bloating, frequent urination, weight loss, pleural effusion. Uh, bleeding is actually kind of rare, but can occur. On exam, you might find a fixed unilateral mass. This is diagnosed with imaging, and always have to think about this diagnosis if you have an older female with new onset ascites. So cervical cancer. So average age of diagnosis here, 54 years old. Um, so risk factors, you know, anything that puts you at risk for HPV, like multiple partners, high-risk male partners, smoking can also put you at risk. 90% of the cases is squamous type. And then symptoms that you can present with are abnormal vaginal bleeding, postcoital bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding, um, unusual vaginal discharge and pain. And the way to diagnosis is cervical biopsy. So let's talk about some other sources of non-pregnant vaginal bleeding. So there are non-uterine vaginal bleeding, so blood coming from the cervix, from the vagina itself, uh, urinary tract or GI tract, or associated with systemic coagulation disorder. And then there's inovulatory dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So that's 90% of all dysfunctional uterine bleeding. So there's a change in the amount and frequency of menstrual bleeding, typically infrequent periods, maybe a lack of premenstrual signs, and that's because of a lack of progesterone. This is pretty frequent at menarche in about 40%, and perimenopausal in another 20% of cases. Uh, predisposers to this, uh, PCOS, hirsutism, obesity, low-calorie diets and intense exercise, diabetes, uh, and thyroid disorders. Okay, so what about ovulatory bleeding? So you can have dysfunctional bleeding, right? So you get regular periods, but they're excessively heavy. Um, they can be longer in duration. And there's different causes. So you can have liver disease, right? You can have coagulation disorders, thrombocytopenia. You can see it in fibroids or even hypothyroidism. There's a nice chart here that talks about different causes and breaks it into structural and non-structural causes. And so this, again, is available for your reference. How about treatment of non-pregnant uterine bleeding? Well, it depends on whether they're hemodynamically unstable or hemodynamically stable. If they're unstable, you gotta resuscitate the usual ABCs, IV access, fluids and blood transfusion, and correction, importantly, of any underlying coagulopathy. You wanna get a pregnancy test urgently and rule out a possible ectopic bleeding versus a pregnancy-related cause. Um, hemorrhage control, so conjugated estrogens, tranexamic acid, uh, you can do mechanical tamponade with a balloon catheter. You really want to avoid vaginal packing if possible because this increases the risk of infection and obscures ongoing hemorrhage, which might be occurring silently. And then they need a stat gyne consult or transfer for OBGYN care. Um, hemodynamically stable bleeds, they can be treated with a combined oral contraceptive three times a day for seven days or progestin-only oral contraceptive. Uh, they can get IM progestins one time in the ED with a three-day course of PO, and they need close outpatient follow-up with OBGYN. What about vaginal bleeding in children? So um, basically this breaks it down um, into, is the vulva normal or abnormal? So just remember, whenever there's a child coming in with vaginal bleeding, you always want to be concerned about trauma, right? Sexual abuse, you want to make sure that you exclude that. And also, is it age appropriate? So as Aaron had mentioned earlier, you can get this neonatal withdrawal bleeding um, very early on, but it can be disconcerting to parents, so they may bring them in, so it's important to know about.